What is a chapter? It's just a little story. It's a group of leading questions that logically relate to each other. That's what makes it a story, is we tell the things that relate to each other. You see how, how false teaching the case method is. In appellate work, if the fact was mentioned in trial, it was considered. Well, try this. Try taking three chapters of, of questions and cutting them up with the scissors and dropping them in a hat and asking them randomly in trial. Now, under the appellate theory, should make no difference. It's all in the record. But we know that's absurd. The only things that matter is what is understood. A fact that isn't understood isn't even a fact anymore. It's gone. And so what we do is we group together facts that belong together to tell a little story. We start generally, we become more specific, we paint a picture of one thing, and then we leave. And what happens if it doesn't go well? We leave. And what happens if it went perfectly? We don't go back and do it again. We leave. We do a chapter. We have exhausted its worth. And we move on. This is crossed by storytelling. It's just a little story. And it creates a picture. You are in the business of creating takeaways, not memorization. I want you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, to memorize the concept of divided attention and be able on a test to say, Show me three divided attention tasks that occurred in this case. That's memorization. What we want is takeaway. The takeaway is, uh, the cop was doing a bunch of stuff to see if she could concentrate, and she did it right every time. That's the takeaway. The takeaway is the bottom line, the picture, not a memorization of an answer. You attended the academy. You went to the NHTSA course. you also been to the, the A-Ride training. You're trained in... Noting the cues of impaired. First is observing the vehicle. Observing the vehicle. You see what we're doing is we, let's not start with, and then you observe the vehicle. No, no, your whole training was begin with observing the vehicle. Let's talk about all the wonderful observations because the manual says that is information on whether they're impaired. And the Pre-test interactions. Look at all of the things she did right. Let's break it down. Let's break it. You say, well, it's taking longer. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of fun when you're talking about stuff you like. The cross, good cross, isn't full of fights we win. It's full of fights we don't have. These things happened. She was polite and cooperative. She could follow the instructions. She did follow the instructions. Let's make it into something that's a story. So the jury, and why are we talking about following instructions officer as part of, of DUI enforcement? Why are we talking about that? Because, of course, she's supposed to follow instructions of a law enforcement agent. The reason we're talking about that is because they taught you at the academy in the manual, give the secret tests to see if they can follow the instruction. On the walk the line, you, the first instruction is, I'm going to read you the instructions, don't begin until I'm done. And the whole point of that is, these instructions take three paragraphs. I've blown it up on a board. There's 119 words here. And you told her, don't begin until I'm done reading them. I'm not going to give them to you to study. And you not only have to not begin until I tell you, but when you begin, you got to remember all of the instructions because I won't help you. Now, we don't have to do it in that tone of voice, but we do it in a helpful voice. And then what happens when she doesn't begin until you're done? That's an A. And she began with her right foot, and that's what the instruction said to do. That was a test, because if she begins with her left foot, you'd have marked it down. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down. She's going to go A, 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 C, F, okay. She's going to get an 85, and you're going to give her an F. The machine isn't powered up. You had to wait for the machine to be powered up. Well, let's go into the manual for the machine. And, and you're the guy overseeing the running of the test. 
And it's your responsibility to run it properly. And the reason it's your responsibility is you're supposed to be fair to the citizen. You're not supposed to be rooting for her to fail. You're supposed to be giving a citizen a fair test. Right? Now, what are they going to say? No, frankly, we're, we get our kudos for how many arrests we make. I'm really only interested in convictions. If somebody says that to you, you'll figure out what to say next. Right? And you instructed the defendant to start blowing into the breath tube. You're having him blow into the breath tube and the machine isn't on. That's not right. The machine depends on creating a graph, and now you know this stuff better than I do, it creates a graph, and the graph needs to have the machine on when they're blowing. Now, you've created a problem, and let's discuss the inaccurate graph you have produced. And then you turn the machine on after. Take what you have and make it bigger. And what are you doing here? <clears throat> Juries love stories. Everybody loves stories. It's stories, that's how we store information, is in stories. And we create a factual tension. Now, factual tension doesn't mean I'm tense. It just means in a story, something happens, and then something else happens that logically relates. HGN, that's a medical test. You have no medical training. You're not an optometrist. You're not an ophthalmologist. You're not a toxicologist. You have no EMT training. And, and you have no training to do all of these. The more we make HGN into something special, and the more they're not able to do it in a special way, then it matters. It's a scientific test, too. It's, it's an eye exam without a machine. We're dependent on you to do it right. She was dependent on you to do it right. She can't look up and say, I don't think you're supposed to do that with the pencil. <laughs> you know, aren't you supposed... She doesn't know. We're dependent. This jury was dependent on you to do it right. 